the largest CIA leak in history. The leaker was sentenced to 40 years and it was hardly a blip on the mainstream media's radar. And this guy, in many ways, he could be put along the, the, the alongside uh, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, Julian Assange for revealing to Americans what is being done in our name, the absolute uh, worst uh, kind of, of garbage and garbage and espionage and harming other countries that's being done in our name secretly. We're really never told about it or explained exactly what's going on. And he revealed so much of this to us. Now, I think part of the reason that people don't put him along those other leakers is, uh, and by the way, Assange is not a leaker. He's a publisher. So there is a, there is a distinction there. But uh, part of the reason I think is because he claims to have, or not claims, uh, he, he, the, the, the reporting seems to say that he did it not because he really wanted to uh, make Americans aware of what was being done, but more because he was pissed off at the CIA. But I don't actually care for, you know, his reasons. I think that as Americans, we should know what our government's doing. And he is one of several who have been brave enough to tell us, although now he's had his life destroyed and uh, his letters from prison have basically said he he seeks to uh, take his own life or he's, you know, wishes he had a way to take his own life. Anyway, uh, this is Joshua Schulte, he, the largest leaker, or Joshua Schalt, I don't know how, how he chooses to pronounce it, largest leaker of CIA me, uh, material in history, sentenced to 40 years in prison the other day. He was convicted of orchestrating the largest leak of classified material in CIA history, and he's 35. He handed WikiLeaks a trove of CIA cyber espionage tools known as Vault 7 in what federal prosecutors called some of the most heinous, brazen violations of the Espionage, Espionage Act in American history. He was convicted in July 2022 of illegally handling classified information and obstruction of justice after an earlier trial ended on a hung jury. WikiLeaks began publishing the classified data from the stolen CIA files, the first of 26 disclosures. Now, what ABC News is not going to tell you in this reporting and what mainstream media really uh, has not wanted to uh, make clear to you is that this revealed a lot of what the CIA's capabilities are in spying on average Americans, but also spying on everybody overseas. Uh, things we should know as Americans, we should know what our government is up to. But some of these things uh, included uh, the ability to listen to you via your smart TV, even when the TV is not on. So as many of you know, these smart TVs, it's, you know, many people have them. Most people maybe have them where you can say to the television, if you turn if you turn on this feature, you can say to the television, you know, turn on, go to ESPN and it'll do it without a remote control. So that means the TV, whether you turn on the feature or not, has the ability at any given time to listen to you. The thing is, supposedly, it's supposed to not be listening to you unless, you, or at least not sending it online, at least not loading it to the internet. But of course, in order to hear you say, TV, turn on, it has to listen to everything you say. It was revealed that the CIA can listen to you through your television, even when the TV is off. So, you know, that dark TV in the corner, maybe you haven't used it in a couple of weeks and you're like, oh, that old thing, they can listen to you through that even when it's not on. So that's one of the things that the capabilities, but to me, perhaps the most important thing in the CIA Vault 7 was the fact that they have uh, hacking software, and this shouldn't come as a shock, but you know, seeing the evidence, seeing the proof is always a big deal. They have the ability to hack into foreign governments or hack in or in a false flag situation, hack into the US government and, and quietly reveal footprints of their of the hacking that point to another government. Like in a it'll it'll leave little footprints, let's say, in the Russian alpha alphabet, so that people looking who trying to find out who did the hacking will find tiny little footprints, fingerprints, whatever they call them in the hacking community that show it was Russian, even though it was not, it was the CIA, but it's made to look Russian. And this actually fits perfectly with what went down in the leak of the DNC. As we were told, oh, Russian hackers revealed the DNC leaks, blah, blah, blah. But the evidence that it was Russian hackers was things like, oh, they largely operated during Russian hours or like it was the dumbest 
garbage I've ever heard. But then on top of that, if you actually followed the play-by-play, it wasn't a hack. It was a leak. So this was a major leak. This guy's now been sentenced to 40 years. He already He's already been in prison for, I don't know, what, what is it, uh, five or three years or so, a long time. And it's his treatment is so horrible. It's largely solitary confinement. So horrible that he wants to take his life. And yet he's just been given 40 more. And this is what happens to those of us in the United States who dare to tell the truth. Now, of course, in my case, I don't have access to the information that would get me locked up like that, but he did. And, uh, you know, and we saw what they did to Chelsea Manning. Um, if it weren't for a slight little quirk of the Obama administration, Chelsea Manning would still be in prison right now. Uh, we know what they'd love to do to Edward Snowden. We see what they're doing to Julian Assange. Uh, by the way, everyone watch that space. Keep paying attention to what's happening to Assange. It's quite possible he could wind up in a U.S. prison, and you would not even know that he was shipped here, okay? They're not going to let us know. It's not going to be a, hey, everybody, we're extraditing Assange. It's going to be you wake up one morning, and you will find out Assange is in a maximum security prison in Virginia. That is what is going to happen, um, and let's hope it doesn't, obviously, but th- if, if it happens, that would be how it happened.